Did you have symptoms prior to diagnosis that perhaps weren't typical MS symptoms? Are you not diagnosed yet, but you have some odd symptoms? Did you have prodromal symptoms? And better yet, what the heck are prodromal symptoms? In today's video, I'm going to talk about prodrome symptoms and what they mean to us in the MS community. In an interview with Meet the Press, Selma Blair was talking about her early symptoms of MS, and she said, there's a prodromal period, so I'm not certain it was actually full on. I had very clear signs at the time. I had optical neuritis as a child, which really is only from brain trauma or MS. And yet they didn't recognize it, even though I was seeking doctors my entire childhood. Hmm. Seeking doctors her entire childhood. Did you have vague or seemingly unrelated symptoms prior to your diagnosis? Let me know in the comments below. I love to hear from my viewers and sharing our stories with each other may help another person with MS. So what is the prodromal period? Prodrome is defined as an early symptom indicating the onset of disease or illness. MS prodrome symptoms are subtle symptoms that may show up 5, 10, 15, or more years before a discernible MS symptom or the first classical MS demyelinating event. And there is still not conclusive evidence that there is a prodromal period for MS, but there are some compelling studies showing that it's very likely. In the past decade, there have been several large population studies that have found that people with MS have utilized healthcare more and shown symptoms retrospectively. In Canada, they did a large study with more than 14,000 people with MS and 72,000 controls. They found that the use of healthcare services by patients with MS was higher in the five years leading up to their first clinical demyelinating event. And in the year before that first demyelinating event, hospitalizations and physician visits were 78 and 88% higher respectively for people with MS than for matched controls. And not only that, but dispensed prescription medications were 49% higher among patients who went on to develop MS. Wowza, that's a lot. A Norwegian study showed cognitive changes in people that later went on to develop MS. In a study, they noted retrospectively that of more than 20,000 men, 18 to 19 years of age, who underwent cognitive testing as part of their mandatory national military service, it was found that cognitive performance was lower for up to two years before MS onset in the nearly 1,000 men who went on to develop relapsing MS. In those that went on to develop primary progressive MS, cognitive performance was lower for up to 20 years before disease onset. 20 years! Huh. Uh, some of the other symptoms that have been reported in the years leading up to MS were fatigue, depression, anemia, bowel and bladder disturbances, fibromyalgia, pain, insomnia, and migraines. When you think back to the years before your first MS event, do you remember going to the doctor more? Did you have any of these symptoms that you sought a doctor's opinion on? Let me know in the comments. There are other diseases that have proven prodromal phases, such as Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease. And there are some other autoimmune diseases that have prodromal phases too, such as rheumatoid arthritis and diabetes. More studies are needed, but I believe we're very close to having proven prodromal symptoms for MS. There are other factors and biomarkers that may help with determining the prodromal phase as well. Neurofilament light chains, which are proteins that are highly specific for neurons, may indicate changes in disease activity and help during this phase. And when imaging incidentally finds abnormalities that may be associated with MS before there are symptoms, it may help too. Some people get MRIs for other reasons, such as accidents or traumas, and then they find lesions that are not causing symptoms yet. Okay, so this is all really interesting, but how is knowing this going to help people with MS? If they can identify people in the prodromal stage, perhaps, there may be an opportunity to diagnose earlier in the disease and prevent progression. They may be able to offer them neuroprotective treatment. It also opens a window of opportunity to perhaps intervene with diet and lifestyle factors that can be beneficial as well, such as increasing vitamin D, recommending an exercise regime, 
and encouraging a healthy body weight, and perhaps offer pre-symptom DMTs. I often say that we live in amazing times, and it's a great time to have MS, if there is such a thing. There are over 20 DMTs to slow or stop our MS. There are new and incredible technologies to help us, and there's new and ongoing research into how diet and lifestyle changes can help us manage our symptoms and possibly prevent progression. And there's another great thing about the times we live in, too. Machine learning and artificial intelligence. Y'all know I'm a geek, and when it comes to analyzing data, machine learning and artificial intelligence are really cool. In this paper about Parkinson's prodrome, they talk about the diagnosis of these neurodegenerative motor disorders as essentially clinical. Consequently, the diagnostic accuracy mainly depends on the professional knowledge and experience of the physician. But they can utilize artificial intelligence to look at large amounts of clinical data and information. This may become a fantastic tool to help identify people in the prodromal stages of the disease. The paper went on to conclude that artificial intelligence applied to neuroimaging studies is providing a significant contribution to shed light on the pathogenic mechanisms underlying the onset of symptoms of Parkinsonian syndromes. Machine learning and artificial intelligence can be much more accurate than relying on human experience, and it can also be used with other diseases, like MS. The data is out there, and with the advent of artificial intelligence, we may be able to help people before they develop disability or permanent damage. And this data may also prevent misdiagnosis. So, is there a prodromal stage of MS? It seems to me that there is. Here's what we know so far. There is emerging evidence that MS does indeed have a prodromal phase. People that are diagnosed with MS have an increased in utilization of healthcare in the years prior to demyelinating events or diagnosis. There's not yet a precise list of MS prodrome symptoms or clinical features, but I believe we're getting close. MRIs and labs may help in identifying those in the prodromal phase. Artificial intelligence might be utilized to identify those in the prodromal phase. And of course, more research is needed, but good news, it's ongoing. Perhaps we'll get to a point when hospitals or insurance companies will be able to utilize the data they have to help with the diagnosis of MS or other conditions when they're in the prodromal stage, leading to earlier treatment and better outcomes. A better understanding of the MS prodrome could have profound implications for the prevention, earlier recognition and diagnosis of MS, particularly regarding interventions to prevent MS or delay the onset of typical clinical symptoms and or disability. That's pretty cool. We live in amazing times. Do you know what else is amazing? You are. If you've already subscribed to the channel and liked the video, thank you. If you haven't yet, please consider doing so. It helps the channel and helps it to reach more people. Oh, and don't forget to sign up for my newsletter using the link below. To see more on living well with MS or chronic illness, check out these videos. Until next time, be well.